particularly good academically <laughs> and I struggled with um, lack of confidence and uh, I suppose just general sort of being in the world as a child and I think what then happened was I started to draw and paint and I don't come from an artistic background at all, my family is accountants and uh, you know the <laughs> business people and I, I, I don't quite know where but I suddenly had it, always been able to draw and so I won prizes as, as, as a child, not that I remember any of that, but I was told that I did. And, um, and then as I went through school, that was the thing that I think people encouraged me to do because I wasn't very good at anything else. And my high school was particularly encouraging. And, and so they had a very good art department and in the school. And, and so I just one thing next to the next, and my art teacher said to me, why don't you go to Durban Technicon? and study art and I went down there and looked at the department and looked at all different kinds of careers and I just was, I have to be here. I, it, was a, it was an emotional feeling, I have to be here. It was just as clear as day, I had to be there. So I studied there for four years and ended up majoring in sculpture. And um, Kim Goodwin I met um, there studying. And he later went on to be the founder. And he slowly, I, I travelled for about four years. Went around the world, um, art, 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 just looked as much art as I could. It was like <laughs> grabbing at it. Everywhere I went, every museum, every city I went to, I just went to the art gallery sometimes a few times, absorbed it, spent a lot of time in those places. So I sort of really imbued myself with that energy. And I spent a bit of time in London, debated living there, decided no, I have to come back here, and I have to come back here make art for myself. So it was a huge step to sort of step out of the sort of travelling, no real direction and actually say this is what I'm going to do. And I spent quite a few years, about 10 years teaching in Durban, teaching painting and sculpture and running workshops and really sort of, I suppose, by teaching I taught myself. And, and so eventually I moved to the Midlands and decided that I'm going to do this full time. In the meantime, I had been making sculpture, but now I'm actually doing it full time. I'm how, how long has that been? I've been doing that for three years. Yeah, I've been living in the Midlands and just really working and building my confidence and, and, and making work that really comes from me, not just commissions, and, and trying to find that, a language that, that really expresses what I feel that that is not tangible, how do you express, what, what is the best way of expressing, so for me it's a continuous journey and you know, looking at different sculptors, seeing how they work, what they do, it, it, it sort of all feeds back into that part okay, that then comes out later and I don't know, it's a very exciting journey because it never ends, you know, you never really are happy because you can, you always want to now push further or explore deeper or you know, and, and explore the boundaries in different ways. So, yeah, it, it's it's, a, it's an amazing and frightening, exciting, terrible thing that I have to do every day. <clears throat> you know, sometimes I think, what am I doing? This is so much hard work, and you know, and <clears throat> but then you know, you get the feedback from people, <clears throat> or you sit back and actually look at where you've come from and, and the potential of where I can go. That's, that's very exciting. Yeah, I'm glad I've chosen this. <laughs> That's my career. <clears throat> yeah, so at the moment I'm just finding different places to exhibit and um, meeting different people, and, and it's actually really opened up my horizons. I've really enjoyed. I've been being suddenly very shy. Suddenly realised there's a whole world of interesting people out there, and the relationship between myself, the client, the art. There's a sort of a three-way relationship and, um, yeah, and I found that to be very very important and very exciting. Yeah. So. <laughs> and, and coming all the way to, to Cape Town to... Um, it's been exciting yeah. <laughs> and we, the drive down and the change of the scenery and the landscape and then coming here there's this whole world and this whole environment is completely different to what we used to have there. And it's actually fantastic. And we've had this wonderful venue and amazing support from the Dakar, Dakar Gallery and the whole Cultivaria Festival. So, yeah, I'm very excited to be here. I'm very, um, yeah, it's just a wonderful energy. And I, mean, I, I feel like I've only just, just arrived. So, I think over the next three days, I'm really looking forward to seeing the other art and, and really getting to know Paul a little bit and, 
and chatting to different people, especially local people that come from here, and getting their feedback and um, sharing the process, the bronze process. Sorry, and the, the, could you just tell me a little bit about the, the collective that um, has come okay. down? All right, so we are a, a selection of seven artists, um, including the foundry men. We um, all cast at the Goodwin Foundry. We based in the, uh, he's based in Lidgerton, which is in the Midlands, in the Cosmo Natal Midlands. And we, as the Midlands, I'll just show my brochure, our brochure. This is the Midlands um, brochure that, that kind of indicates all the different kind of events um, that happen, the arts and the crafts, the, and so we, I suppose as a, as a, as a group, we wanted to show what we do in, in another part of the, of the country, so they bring a bit of us somewhere else. And, um, and we, um, we, yeah, so there's seven of us, most of us live either in Kosovo or South, some of us don't, but we all cast our work with him. And that he, his foundry, because he's a sculptor, he has a sensitivity and understanding of the sculptural aspect of the work rather than just the craft aspect or the, the sort of ability to create them, which is a technical process in itself. All the materials and the skills that he's had to master over the last 20 years. But at the end of the day, he's got that sensitivity to the, to the work. And, and here is the foundry. This is Kim Goodwin. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, and so we, um, and I think many of us would not be casting bronze if it wasn't for him because he's nurtured us through the process and helped us understand, encouraged us, fought with us, in, you know, and um, taught us. You know, he's taught me. He, he, because he's also a friend, he's my foundry man and he's a sculptor. You know, when you're stuck, is it working? Is it, and he's there to kind of support us. And I think all of us, Helena, all of us are. Um, indebted to him actually for his encouragement. Neil Yonka, who's a, who's a friend, goes to visit in the Midlands and does his casting and, and learns the process. And uh, you know, and um, Sarah Lovejoy he lives also with, at the Durban Tech, casts her work and she does other kind of works and, and is encouraged to cast them into bronze. And, and all of us, Mark Morsley was a jeweler and now he's doing bronze work. And um, Peter Hall, he studied with us, and he he does a lot of monumental work, and then also has his own, you know has a particular style and work, and is and can cast into concrete and all the other mediums. But Kim sort of brought us all together to really understand the medium of, of bronze and the, and what you can do in bronze that you can't do in any of the other mediums. So uh, that's, uh, that's us. We've uh, tricked our stuff down here, and we are here to to show everybody what we do. Okay, awesome. <laughs>